In the original series of The Seven Deadly Sins, we saw the strengths and the weaknesses of all five of the major races. The humans, the giants, the fairies, the goddesses, and the demon clan. But now, in the age of humans, we get to see something new. Hybrids. Different races coming together, loving one another, and producing offspring that can have all of their powers. But who are the hybrids? For what we've seen so far in The Seven Deadly Sins, most of the hybrids are actually children of the titular group. And boy, do we have quite the list. If you want more Seven Deadly Sins content, like, share, and comment down below of who your favorite hybrid is. And what do you want to see later on in the manga? So, as iterated before, most of the hybrids from the Seven Deadly Sins series are, you know, the children of the Seven Deadly Sins. Meliodas and Elizabeth, Bond with Elaine, and King and Deanne. After all, when you have such a big, diverse group of magical individuals in a group such as the Seven Deadly Sins, you're going to end up with some pretty unique looking kids. And we're going to start off this list with the first hybrid of all. Chris and Leonis, the Nephilim. The Nephilim race, surprisingly, has a term. Yeah, unlike the other races, this one already has a name. Nephilim, meaning cursed child. Uh, according to the demon clan, that is. So it's essentially a slur. Wow. Which is weird, because Melascula and other demons know what the term is for a goddess and a demon hybrid, but the only known individual who was born naturally is Tristan Leonis. And as a hybrid of these two races, Tristan has a lot of potential. He can use Ark just like his mom and the rest of the goddess clan. When his eyes shine, the symbol shows in his eyes, he is able to heal wounds, use light to attack all sorts of dark forces. But when his demon mark shows, pray to whatever god you worship because you are probably not going to get out of that alive. Tristan is merciless with the demon mark. He has Hellblaze, the power over darkness, just like his old man. If he goes for too long, he will go berserk and brutally rip you apart. There is no mercy when it comes to this. This isn't the only time we've seen the Nephilim, though. Which leads to my theory that the Nephilim race was created artificially. The only other times we've seen other individuals similar to a Nephilim like Tristan are this weird-looking chaos... I don't even know what the word is, but it's a combination of a demon and a goddess clan soul fused together, created by Melascula. It's similar to a Nephilim, which is how we got the term for it. She knows, a 3,000-year-old demon knows what Tristan is. And she made it on the spot. But the more famous example that many people compare Tristan to is Mael. Once he awakened from his, uh, let's just call it Esterosa persona, he awakened his goddess clan powers and was able to use both of them at the same time all while having four commandments in his body, giving him the means to do so. There is so much potential for Tristan Leonis, and if you want to see what I'm talking about, go check out my other videos to be sure. But there is something we need to talk about when it comes to the Nephilim race, and that is the innate magic. Tristan is the first of his own kind. He's neither a goddess nor a demon, and because of that, he has his own unique magic, which has been called Nova. Signs show that this magic is affecting both his demon and goddess clan powers. From his goddess clan side, all of his spells are named after stars. While in this demon form, while we haven't seen any attacks, his demon mark is, you guessed it, a star, because his magic is called Nova. Now this is actually pretty symbolic. Bits of light surrounded by darkness, that's pretty fitting for a Nephilim. I can't wait to see what Tristan is going to be doing next throughout the manga, if we ever get to him, but here's hoping that this Nephilim can truly master light and darkness. After Tristan Leonis, we have Lancelot, son of Bon and Elaine, and I swear this could have been easily the weakest, seriously, the most weak race ever. This combination is just screaming, pathetic. If not for Bond and Elaine, Lancelot and his hybrid race classification could have been so freaking weak. 
I mean, come on. Humans are one of the weakest races in the seven deadly sins. And pair that with a fairy who usually get their asses kicked pretty easily. I mean, come on. King, the fairy king of all of his clan, lost his snack to a cat. They are so physically weak, but they do have a lot of good, interesting abilities to make up for it. Still, if Lancelot's dad was not Bond coming back from purgatory and his mom was not a child of a, another god, the sacred tree, the weakest combo. But as it stands now, Lancelot is strong. And boy does it show, at age 10, he lifted a freaking boulder that's twice his size. He's as fast as Sonic the Hedgehog, and he can punch just as hard as Hercules. This guy is a level 10 class assassin. And this is paired dangerously with his other abilities that he inherited from the Fairy Clan. From the Fairy Clan, he can transform into, well, a lot of things. Most iconically, he can turn into animals as he turned into Sin the Fox. Yeah, the hints were there, but hey, we, we figured out that it was going to be Lancelot eventually. But it's not just cute, fuzzy little animals that you turn into. You can turn into a giant, you can turn into fairies, because he can't fly, he doesn't have wings, and he can't levitate like normal fairies. But when he transforms, he can compensate for that. Then there's his more useful ability, his heart reading. Or, I guess the more technical term is mind reading. Once Lancelot reads your mind, he knows who you are as a person and how you fight. He implements this with his own magic, Hazy Moon, allowing him to channel and direct his wickedly crazy OP magic. Lancelot might be a combination of the weakest races, but this human fairy certainly is a true god of war. Okay, so for this one, spoilers. I repeat, spoilers. Because now we are going to be going into the children of King of the Inn, the fairy giant hybrids go uh go to this time skip if you don't want to be spoiled on the manga okay okay so about these hybrids i was so excited to see this droll and gloxinia showed the potential of what a hybrid between a fairy and a giant can do heck look at all the fairy kings they were all paired up with giants so having a hybrid of these two races could have been amazing. A hybrid with both the power of Earth and nature at their disposal. Along with the fairy clan weaponry, the heir could have been amazing. A true heir to the fairy king and the giant queen. The best of both races all rolled into one. But, sadly, this combination is just weird. I don't know why Nakaba decided to do this, but the fairy giant hybrids suck. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but these guys just suck. I mean, come on. Look at these characters. Look at them. Look at King Indian's kids. Look at them. They are so weirdly one-sided. They're not a combination of their races. They're leaning more into just one of their parental lineages. I was expecting, I guess, Dahlia. I mean, come on, Dahlia. This guy is as buff as a giant. I was expecting individuals like this when it came down to the royal family. But as it stands now, Boy, oh boy, do half of these kids lack a lot of luster. So let's talk about, again, spoilers for this, the first hybrid of the giant and the fairy clan. And that is, nope, not this guy. It's actually Nassian. Yeah, the, this kid. This kid who has no wings cannot read vines, cannot shapeshift, cannot fly, and just, really? I, uh, oh my god, just, uh, 
Okay, I get the whole, you know, all right, the, it was clear. It was very obviously clear that, that Nazi Ennis was going to be their kid. I mean, come on, he looks almost exactly like them, but this, he, they are a very giant hybrid. Nazi Ennis could easily pass for a regular human. Nazi Ennis has power over poison, which is more connected to the fairy aspect just like how we see the other members of the clan. After Nasien's is Sixtus, who does look a lot like his old man. Heck, he doesn't have wings and he can levitate and he uses a spirit weapon. As for the pink hair, this might be a theory of mine, but I think that his hair is pink because of the sacred tree. Remember, King is technically a descendant of a God, the, the sacred tree was created by chaos, just like the supreme deity and the demon king. So, I guess this is his grandmother's hair. Is, is this right? After Sixus, we have Belte, who is another hybrid who leans very, very heavily into the fairy clan aspect of his race. But not only does he have fairy, but not only does he have fairy clan traits, he has more. He has wings, and he has pointy ears. Then we also have the giant sisters, Zana and Ziliana, who are much smaller than normal giants, but they are still big and they have power over the earth, just like their dear mom. And then there's Feo. This goblin looking toddler child is honestly the most mixed of the two. They are big, but not too big. And they're genderless. Yeah, apparently throughout this arc, we find out that fairies can pick their gender through love, which is a nice detail, but really? Okay, just, all right, the world building, I guess. And then we have Tiori. Tiori was technically one of the first public hybrids that we saw from this family, introduced in the Seven Deadly Sins Origins game trailer. Now, look at all these siblings. Could you possibly have guessed that they were all related and they were all members of the same hybrid group? This is weird. Tristan and Lancelot are clear examples of what the hybrids could have been, inheriting both of their powers, but also not exactly living up to the full potential. They are hybrids, so they get two powers, but it's not as, say, Tristan's magic is superior to Meliodas's nor to his mother's. The same way with Lancelot's fairy clan abilities are to his mother's. But as for these hybrids, they lean too much into one of their racial lineages, not mixing the both of them. And this is a shame. I was actually really excited to see this group in action. I was expecting a mix of nature and earth, maybe even some sort of innate magics to go with it, like maybe power over trees but just comboing it in the same way that it would be for a, for the creation. So, why do these very giant hybrids vary so differently? Why do they act so weird? Why do these kids seem like nothing? Well, I think that's because Nakaba didn't have a plan. Now, I know what you're thinking. Surely he had something for Nasiens and Tiori, Tiori showed up in the game. Surely he had an idea. Well, not entirely. It was revealed in a volume extra that Nakaba didn't have a plan. Yeah, when he announced Tiori, he tried to think of what the other six siblings were going to be, and he had nothing. He panicked. So he last minute did these kids. This probably explains why they're so half-assed, and that's a shame. I was expecting so much from this hybrid class. Tristan and Lancelot are better examples of what these kids could have been. As for these giant fairy hybrids, they leave way too much the imagination of what could have been. Maybe if Nakaba had more time, these kids could have been done so much better. But as they are now, well, we're just... Gonna have to wait and see, I guess. And now I want to come to another section. What do you want for a Seven Deadly Sins hybrid? 
We've seen numerous examples of what we can get from these clans, their full potential, and what we could get for combos. The Ten Commandments showed what would happen with a demon and the other races. Mile for the Goddess Clan, Gloxinia for the Fairy Clan, Droll for the Giants, and I guess Hendrickson and Dreyfus for demons and humans. But let me know in the comments what you would want to see for a hybrid. And in the meantime, I'll see you later, guys. Thank you for sticking to the end of the video.